Well, welcome to the next topic. Uh, we're looking now to range. Okay, we've already looked what the domain is. The domain is what may we put in, and we saw that we're not always allowed to just have any input. For example, in a fraction, my denominator may not be zero. In a uh, radical, the input of a even radical may not be less than zero. And then the logarithm, the input of a logarithm may not be zero, or um, it may also not be negative. Now, when it comes to the range, range is what I can get out. What can I get out? And obviously, um, I can't get out every possible number with certain functions, and uh, which means that my range is also restricted. Let me start with the example of fractions again. Okay, if I have a fraction, so for example, let's assume that I have fx is equal to 1 over x. That is my fraction. A fraction cannot be 0. And I mean it cannot be 0 if the numerator is not 0. It doesn't matter what denominator I use. It can never be 0. Uh, assume it like that. Uh, assume it's my birthday and I have a cake and I share it with you. Okay, so we share it in half. Okay, then I have one cake divided by two. In other words, my x was two. Okay, now each one of us gets a half. If both of us bring our halves together, we must have the whole. Okay, now what's going to happen if we have more friends? Let's say I, invi I invited you and two other friends, so we four people, I divided in four. Now each one of us are, are going to get a smaller piece than if it's just two. So when I divide with four, I'm going to get a smaller piece. Okay, each piece is now smaller. But when all four of us bring our pieces back together, I still have the whole. Now let's go further. Let's say I invited more friends, four more friends actually, and now I'm dividing it into eight pieces. Now as you can see, the eighth piece or the eight pieces are now each one smaller because I, I had one cake and I divided. And so it happens that let's say I invited every person in the world to my party. Okay, you are gonna get a crumb if so much. If I divide that whole cake with every person in the world, it you might get probably nothing. You might not be able to see it, but it is not nothing. It's not zero because when everyone brings what they got together again, I must have my whole cake. And if everyone got nothing, nothing times 7 billion is still nothing. So in other words, you won't get nothing. You will never have a fraction equal to zero unless what I divided can be equal to zero. I didn't divide nothing, I divided a cake. So in that case, a fraction, no matter what the denominator is, it can even be a negative number, it doesn't matter, that fraction can never be zero. Well, let me do it like this. We know that a fraction, and what's the fraction? The fraction is 1 over x. 1 over x cannot be zero. It's impossible. No matter what I use for x, I can never get 0. x may not be 0, and 1 over x cannot be equal to 0. If that's the case, then I know that this is my y value. That's how I get y. By using this, this formula, I get a y. So y will never be able to be equal to 0. So I can write this. Let's write it in um, a set notation. So y can be an element of any real number. So y is an element of any real number, given that y is not equal to 0. Okay, well let's, uh, let's look at another example, a different example this time. That fx is equal to, uh, let's say, 2 over x minus 1. Yeah, just like that. Okay, that is my function. Now remember what we said, that the fraction cannot be equal to zero. Let's make that a negative. Okay. A fraction cannot be equal to zero. Now this is the fraction. In other words, I know the fraction, that is the fraction, may not equal zero. But that is the fraction I used to get y. In other words, y may not be equal 
to zero. So it's exactly the same as the one we we just did right there. It's exactly the same as that. So I'm not going to waste more time writing it differently. If I had fx is equal to negative 3 over x plus 7 minus 2, or oh, x plus, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, there's an, another example. Okay, remember what we said. The fraction may not, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to get the range, the fraction cannot be zero. So this is my output. Uh, my output. I want to know what can I get out. Well, one thing that I know is this part of my output cannot be zero. Okay, so my output cannot be zero minus two. It's impossible. In other words, my y value cannot equal negative two. It's impossible. Why? Because this part of my output, the fraction part, cannot be zero. So my answer can never be zero minus two. Never, because that, that zero can never exist. It will always be something minus two. And therefore my output can never be zero minus two or just negative two. Another way I could have done it is I could have just said, okay, well, I know that negative three over x plus three. That cannot equal zero. But that is not my function. My function is negative three over x plus three minus two. Okay, that's my function. And that cannot be equal to, now look what I did. I subtracted a 2 on the left side to get that. So I must subtract a 2 on the right side as well. So this cannot be. Okay? And this part is my y value, my output value. Y cannot be equal to negative 2. Let's write that in bracket notation. So I can say, well, y is an element of, so in bracket notation we have negative 2 here. Okay, it cannot be equal to negative 2. It can be smaller and it can be larger. So I can go from negative infinity all the way to negative 2, but I'm not allowed to equal negative 2. I have to unite that with the top part. So I unite it, that's the unite sign, with the numbers from negative 2 upwards. In other words, not equal to, in other words, I don't use block letters, negative 2 all the way to positive infinity. That's another way of writing the range. Okay, so that's one way, is that my fraction cannot equal zero. Let's look at the next one. The next one is that even powers cannot be negative. You remember with the domain, even roots could not have a negative inside. And it's the same condition, it's just with powers, that even powers cannot be negative. So, for example, x squared will always be a positive answer. So, it will always be bigger or equal to zero. So, if I have the function f of x is equal to x squared, and I'm asked to find the domain, or the range, I mean, if I'm asked to find the range, then I see, okay, well, I know that x squared, an even power, cannot be negative. So x squared will be positive or equal to zero, which means that y, that's the value, this can just be replaced with y, y will be bigger or equal to zero. My output will be bigger or equal to zero. Okay, and how are we going to write it? Let's just write it in the the normal set, but other than that y can be any real number. y is bigger or equal to zero, but y is a real number. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's say I have fx is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 7. Okay, remember my even power must be bigger or equal to zero, so x minus 2 squared this part. It doesn't matter what's inside of that. All I know that is that this bracket squared will always be bigger or equal to zero. It doesn't matter what's on the inside, it will always be bigger or equal to zero. It will be equal to zero if x, for example, is 2. Then it will be 2 minus 2 is 0. 
0 squared is 0. For any other number, it would be bigger than 0 because it's being squared. Even if it's a negative number, it becomes positive after the square. But that's not what my output is. My output is not just this bracket, it also has a plus 7. So to to do that, I know, okay, this part will always be bigger or equal to 0. So if I add a 7 on this side, I must also add a 7 on the other side. Now I have uh, my output, or the formula at least, so this part is the y part. That is what's going to give me my y answer, which means my y answer will always be bigger or equal to 0 plus 7. In other words, 7. y will be bigger or equal to 7 do bracket notation so y is an element of bigger or equal to 7 so that means if we have 7 here it's bigger than 7 so it's in that direction and 7 is also included because it's equal to so we have a block letter uh, sorry a block um, bracket with 7 and bigger or equal to and it never stops okay so it's not limited so it goes up to infinity which we can never equal so that is one way of expressing the range okay and if we use this it already assumes y is a real number this is only a notation we use for real numbers okay now let's look at another example that is a little bit more complicated imagine I have my fx and my fx is negative um, well negative 3 x minus 2 squared plus 1 okay now remember my power refers to my base and my exponent. If I talk about an even power, it this base and exponent, that is called a power. My base is the whole bracket, so I know that x minus 2, my power squared, must be bigger or equal to 0. It must be, it cannot be anything else. Okay, not in real numbers, anyways. Okay that's not what I have though I have that multiplied by negative 3 so I must multiply both sides with a negative 3 now very important when we multiply with a negative the uh, inequality sign swaps around which means if this is always positive and I multiply it with a negative number it will always be negative so in other words now negative 3 x minus 2 squared will now always be smaller or equal to negative uh, 3 times 0 is 0. So this time it will now always be negative because this will always be positive that's always going to be negative which means the result will always be negative. And uh, it's still not finished I have a plus 1 there so negative 3 x minus 2 plus 1 on both sides 0 plus 1 on both sides now gives me that this is my y value that's the whole fx so my y value my output value will be less or equal to 1 and I like the the bracket notation for these types okay so y is an element okay if I draw my graph 1 is included everything less than 1 y is less than or in equal to 1 so y is, well, we'll probably start at negative infinity, and it will go all the way up to negative, sorry, not negative 1, positive 1. Positive 1, because that's positive 1. would go up to positive 1, and positive 1 is included, so we use a um, closed bracket to indicate the included. And there we go. Okay, that is the second one. So we have fractions, we've looked at powers, and what do you know, the next one, not logarithms, the inverse of logarithms, which is exponent. Okay, this time powers with a non-zero base cannot be zero or less. A power with a non-zero base cannot be zero or less. Now, a typical example of that is, is exponential uh, functions. In other words, where my unknown is in the exponent. 
Now, what I mean by that is that this, this exponent, that x, can take on any number. You can put any number in the exponent. The domain is x may be anything. But your output is limited because this whole thing, that is a power, a base, and an exponent is a power. And we said that a power with a non-zero base, we see the base is the 2, <coughs> cannot be 0 or less. In other words, 2 to the power of x will always be larger than 0. 2 to the power of x will always be larger than 0. I can't get it negative because 2 is multiplied by itself x times. By itself. Itself is positive. Which means that it's a positive times a positive. It will always be positive. Okay? It might be less than 1. It might be a fraction. If x is negative, it will become a fraction. Okay? But it will never be less than 0 or even equal to 0. Two, no matter how many times or what value x takes, 2 to the power of that x can never equal 0. Which means in this case, that is my output. 2 to the power of x is how I calculate my output. So my output will always be bigger than 0. If I were to write this in my bracket notation, um, I could say y is an element of open bracket 0 all the way to infinity. Also open bracket. So because 0 is not included and neither is I positive infinity, y is anywhere between 0 and that positive infinity. Okay, let's look at one more. Okay, how about if I have something like, okay, fx is equal to 3 to the power negative x plus 1. Okay, again, for range, we notice that, oh, okay, my power with a non-zero base, that can never be 0. So that power can never be 0. So 3 to the power negative x. This negative doesn't change anything in terms of the range. This power can still not be 0 or less than 0. So it will always be bigger than 0. It's not how I get my output though. I must still, after I've put the x into the exponent there, I must still add a 1. So on both sides, I add a 1. And I see 0 plus 1 is 1. And I see that y is therefore greater than 1. And how we will write that in bracket notation will be like this. I've done quite a few examples now, so to save your time, uh, pause it if you're not sure. But to save your time, I'm not going to explain every step. Okay, how about if I have my fx is equal to negative, uh, let's make it 7x um, plus 1 minus 3. Okay, in this example, we see my base and exponent, my base and exponent can never be less than, oh sorry, must be bigger than zero. What that means is that my base and my exponent is 7x plus 1. 7x plus 1. You might ask, no, no, what about the negative? Isn't this negative part of the base? No, it is not. If it was part of the base, it had to be in brackets to show that it is part. If it's not in brackets, it actually means that there's a little 1 in front there. So it's negative 1 times 7. So it's not part of the base, and it does change it. You'll see uh, why in just a minute. So I've got that, that this will always be positive. Always be positive. So if I multiplied with a negative 1 on both sides, it must always be negative. So negative 7x plus 1. Because I'm multiplying with a negative, my sign changes around. So now negative that must now always be negative. And I'm not finished. Not only must it always be negative, I must also add a 3. Uh, sorry, not add a 3. I think it's subtract a 3. Yes, subtract a 3. 
which means I'm a subtracted on both sides. So 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So this is how I get my output, and that must be less than negative 3. So to write that in my bracket notation, y is an element, it's less than negative 3, which means it goes all the way up to negative infinity, not included, and it goes up to 3, and 3 is also not included. It would have been included if there was an equal sign, but as we said, it does not include 0 and therefore not negative 3. And there we go, that's what we did about the range and what is the range? Remember the range are the possible values that I can get with a certain function. So for this one y can take any value between negative infinity and negative 3. So what that also means is that in this function I will never be able to get the value 0 for example no matter what I put in for x because 0 is not included in my range. It would be impossible for me to get that value by substituting some value for x. Well, I hope you got it. Um, that concludes domain and range, and you can do some examples right now. Good luck.